Stefan, congratulations uh, on the results. Can you talk to us about the next steps uh, about the P3 trial? Sure. So thank you again for having me today. So we're very excited because we showed, you know, a 44% decreased risk versus recurrence or death in this study. And we know it's real because the p-value, statistical significance, is very, very low. So that's very good. So the next step, because the data are so exciting, is to move to a phase three in skin cancer in melanoma as fast as we can in 2023. But also, we believe this is a good proof that this product made by Moderna is able to teach T cell in your immune system to look for cancer cell. And so we think this is applicable to over tumor types. And so we want with our partners Merck or MSD outside the US to go after a lot of phase three at the same time in parallel to bring this product to patients as soon as we can. You talk about it being applicable to, to other cancers, Stefan. Let, let's talk about kind of where we are in the bigger challenge. Immunotherapy, melanoma is relatively easy easier. You get all the way down to the other end, pancreatic cancer, much more difficult. What you're doing now, how applicable is it going to be to other cancers? How quickly can you go from the easier end of the spectrum to the more difficult end of the spectrum? So we think we can go pretty quickly because through the phase one, two study, we have shown there's a good safety profile of a product combined to ketidra. As you know, in immunotherapy, sometimes the combination drive worse safety outcome. Well, in this case, and the data will be published very soon in the top tier journal, the safety profile is very similar to Ketidra alone. And so that gives us a lot of hope. Now, as you know, cancer has a lot of peace we don't understand. But the thing we're going to do is try those uh, different tumor types in the clinic because that's the only way to really know. We believe the mechanism of our product is sound now. We had shown before at ASCO 2019 that we could teach T cell of a cancer patient to recognize uh, the cancer, the epitope, the mutation, but we didn't know if it was clinically significant. Well, now we know. And so we're just gonna go after it. Is it gonna work everywhere? I don't know, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna try aggressively. You know, we have a $17 billion balance sheet, and then there's Merck paying the over half of the studies. It's a 50-50 cost share and profit share. And so we're gonna be very aggressive for the benefit of patients, and in the meantime, you know, creating value for shareholders. So uh, along that point, um, when you measure the risk of cancer returning, the band seems really wide, right? 0.31 to 1.08, everything over one is more like the control group. Um, why is it so wide and what does that tell you? You still have a lot of variability because first, people didn't get the products at the 45 day mark. You know, that was our goal from needle of biopsy to injecting the first dose at 45 days. That's the average. Some people got lower, some people get more. That's one piece. Then it's the size of a study. You know, even though it's statistically significant, uh, as the statisticians have run the math, and the p-value is very low, it's only 150 people. And so I really believe as we go into phase three, and as we reduce the manufacturing time, because while today the average is 45, and we have people getting their vaccine much later, because, you know, we were not running 24-7. This was a phase two. Now that we know this is working for real, we are doing a massive yeah. investment in manufacturing to be able to hold the line on timeline and to even shrink it. I think we can shrink it to 30 days. So I think you're going to see the, the variability going down with time. How long will that take? The, uh, the science here is basically you have surgery or, as you say, a biopsy. You take it away. Uh, you mash it up. You run some AI. You come back with that individual mRNA uh, treatment. In terms of getting that timeline down, what is the bottleneck? Is it the computers? Is it the machines? Is it, can just tell me what it is that, that you need to do to get that to be sped up. Sure. So the 45 days that I think we can get down to 30 days and maybe more uh, in terms of shortening the time, it's first sequencing the tumor. So we take a tumor biopsy. We have to sequence it and do all the sample prep. And of course, this is very important because if you make a mistake then, then the information is wrong downstream. Then the analytics uh, in the cloud is very quick, a few hours. It's a very complex algorithm, but you, you can buy CPU. So it's all in the Amazon cloud. And then it goes back into the machine. Making the, the DNA that is specific, that is coding the mRNA, it takes a bit of time. And this, we think we might have soon options to shrink that even mm -hmm. further. Then the mRNA is a few days. We, we need to fill the vials. And then it's quality control to make sure the product, of course, is sterile, which takes two weeks. So I think. We're also working with how can we use new technology to shrink this down as well. 
how long would a patient have to take the medicine for? And what would you think the cost pro profile and the pricing be to the patient? Great. So in the current study, it was nine doses. And it's like very easy. It's intramuscular. It's 100% the same technology as Spikevax or COVID-19 vaccine. So same chemistry for the mRNA, same chemistry for the lipid, same manufacturing process. And so it's only nine doses, intramuscular. They are taken at the same time as the patient goes back to get Ketidra to make it patient friendly. And so it's not a lot of doses. So how, so how long is that and what will it cost? So we are not talking about pricing yet because we are focusing on a phase three. We'll discuss that with Merck. Uh, we want to make sure, of course, that this is available so that everybody can benefit from it. Speaking of pricing, are you in current discussions at all with the Chinese government about providing your mRNA vaccine to them as they reopen? We are talking to the Chinese government to figure out how can we help them because it's a sovereign discussion. I can, of course, not discuss about it until everything is finalized. But, but there, is a, there is a live discussion right now. There are discussions ongoing, like it is the case with many governments around the world. But yes, there are discussions ongoing. Uh, if they did want the vaccine, do you have enough to give them? Is, is there the product OK? So we have a lot of products available. Plus, if you think about we are on the back end of a winter season in the US in terms of supply to Europe, Japan and the US market. And so actually we have the entire manufacturing capacity of Moderna that's available for China if necessary. So we can provide a lot. What do you see happening right now? I'm just going to get your take, just get your macro take on the world right now, Stefan. A lot of people are, are talking about a recession uh, next year. We're seeing data. We've just seen some data showing inflation starting to ease off a little bit. What are you seeing in your business? What are the big kind of macro levers that are affecting you right now? And what are you seeing with them? Sure. So, of course, like everybody else, we're feeling inflation in terms of energy, raw materials, you know, all our suppliers and, of course, employees in terms of wage. Uh, Moderna, I think, is in a great spot because we have this amazing platform. You know, we have 30 vaccines in infectious disease, now cancer. We're showing good progress in liver, rare genetic disease, in cardio. And also yesterday, our partner Vertex announced the first inhaled mRNA into the lung for lung disease going into the clinic with a green light from FDA. So we're going to be adding a lot of people. You know, we're going to hire 50 percent more employees than we have to. They would add 2,000 people to the company. So Mona is kind of in a unique position, but from a macro standpoint, all the CEOs I talked to indeed are very cautious about next year because mm -hmm. the money supply is being reduced drastically. The cost of money is very high and getting higher. And I think inflation getting into services is going to last longer than people anticipate. I don't think it's going to go away quickly. Last question from me, Stefan. Uh, here in New York City, it's getting pretty bad with RSV, flu, and COVID. When are we going to get a shot that we can take each year that's going to hit all three of them? That's a great question. So we are now in phase three for flu and phase three for RSV. We said we should have data in Q1, so very soon. When we have data, we're going to file those very quickly and get this to the market, assuming, of course, the data is positive. And we're already working in the clinic for combination of the two or the three. And so it's going to be a, a couple of years to get there. We're working as fast as we can with regulators, so a couple more years before you can get a single shot from Moderna. Final question from me. Stefan, you've made a big announcement today. In terms of working our way towards beating cancer, how big a step forward is what you've announced today in terms of that journey? So I think immunotherapy was a big, big revolution, as you know, giving a lot of hope to people, changing survival rates. I think this is immunotherapy 2.0. It's a combination of immunotherapy with a checkpoint to the ability to teach T cell specific mutation of your cancer, and not only one. In the current product, we have 34 mutation of your cancer. So even if your cancer evolves and mutates, we can still catch it. This is a technology of 2019 of Moderna. We have made a lot of progress in the last few years, and so I think we could eventually do even better than today's result. So I think it's a big, big day for cancer and for patients. I think we are going to go more and more towards a stage where cancer is not a death sentence. Cancer is going to be a disease, I think, in maybe five, 10 years. That is a disease like diabetes or heart failure, that you have drugs to be able to help you live a normal life. And that's what excites me.